Hello everyone, this is Susinder and in this video I want to show you why you should turn off the fan before doing any Wi-Fi performance tests. In order to demonstrate this, I'm going to run a throughput test between two wireless clients. Okay, so the traffic is going to be routed through the access point and I'm going to compare the throughput numbers when the fan is turned on versus the fan is turned off. Okay, so let's understand the setup a little bit. So I have a Plume Wi-Fi 6 access point, okay, and uh, two wireless clients. One is a M1 MacBook Pro, which is also Wi-Fi 6, and I have a Windows client, which is also has a uh, Wi-Fi 6 uh, capability. And in order to monitor the data rates, I'm going to use a sniffer, which is a WLAN Pi, okay, which is connected to the MacBook Pro. And I have a fan here, which is a Amazon Basics industrial uh, fan okay it's 20 inch in diameter okay which can be purchased from amazon this was bought from amazon in the us and uh, i'm currently running this throughput test in san jose okay so let's understand the setup a little bit right so we have the access point here this is our plume wi-fi 6 uh, pod okay so this is our access point and these are the two clients this is the m1 macbook pro and then this is the Windows client, okay? So, and I have an iPerf server running on the Windows client, okay? And I'm gonna have the iPerf client running on the M1 MacBook Pro, okay? So when I run the traffic uh, from the client to the iPerf server, that's going to go through the access point, okay? So the frame will get originated from the M1 MacBook Pro, right? From here it will go to the access point access point will route the traffic to the uh, client okay so let's see the baseline throughput numbers right so i'm going to run the throughput uh, when when the fan is off Let, let's just make sure the fan is off so this is our amazon basics 20 inch industrial fan okay so let's start the throughput test and let's see the baseline what numbers we see okay so it's getting about 400 and 20 430 mbps okay so this is uh, with the fan off okay let's uh, also monitor what is the wireless data rate that we are uh, seeing with the double and pi i'm going to use the air tools tool right to control the double and pi and the channel is 157 and 80 megahertz bandwidth so let's do the capture Okay, so it's showing the capture now. Let's also filter on the MAC address of the M1 MacBook Pro. So this is my MAC address of the M1 Mac Pro. And I'm gonna filter on the source address. Okay, so it's gonna show only those frames and you can see the, uh, I have shown the uh, spatial stream, the bandwidth and the MCS, right? It's going live right now. So we can see the, um, Spatial stream is 2, the bandwidth is 80, and the MCS is, uh, you know, 11 or 10, right? Pretty much between 11 and 10 most of the time, right? So this is our throughput. So now let us see uh, what is the number we get when the fan is on. Okay, so let's turn on the fan, right? Let's just make sure this traffic is still running, right? So we see this on the Windows client also. Now let me turn on the fan. Okay, so the fan is running and let's see what happened to the throughput. So the throughput went down to like 140 Mbps. Okay, and let's see the MCS. What happened to the MCS? So the MCS is like MCS 7, 80 megahertz. And sometimes the spatial streams drops to one spatial stream also. You know, occasionally I see that happening, but mostly two spatial stream MCS six right now, right? And here is our throughput. Now, let me just turn off the fan to make sure it's really caused by the fan, right? So I'm going to turn off the fan right now. So I turned off the fan, right? And we should see the throughput increase right now. So let's make sure that happens. Okay, so it's increasing. 
so the throughput is slowly increasing 350 397 and let's see the MCS is that in improved now yes so the MCS has improved to like MCS 11 80 megahertz to stream bandwidth right the throughput is also back to normal let's do this test once again right I'm gonna turn on the fan again you know, I'm just doing it multiple times to make sure it's not due to some interference. Okay, so again, we see pretty much the similar numbers under 200 Mbps. And let's see the MCS. Yes, pretty much it's very consistent, right? It's pretty repeatable, right? Let's turn, on the, turn off the fan right now. And we should see the throughput go up again. Yes, so throughput is increasing and the MCS is also back to like MCS 11. Okay, hope that data is pretty convincing to all of you, right? Now, why did the throughput and fight data rates drop when we turned on the fan? Is it because the fan is emitting some RF interference in channel 157? Actually, you can try repeating this test in different channels, including 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz channels, and you will observe the same behavior regardless of channel. So that dispels the interference theory. To understand what is going on, we need to delve deeper into the Phi layer of Wi-Fi. Here is the Phi layer PPDU format of a Wi-Fi 6 frame. The PSTU in this picture is basically the Phi payload contents. Before the Phi payload, we have the Phi header which consists of several fields. In the physical medium, the PPDU is sent as a waveform and the receiver needs to map the waveform back to a set of bits. In order to do so, the Phi layer at the receiver needs to estimate the wireless channel state information, which is basically a set of complex numbers describing how the wireless medium changes the amplitude and phase of the transmitted waveform. To do this channel estimation, the HELTF fields, which are essentially known OFDM symbols, are employed by the receiver. Now, the crucial assumption in Wi-Fi is that the channel estimated during HELTF stays approximately the same during the PSDU portion. This assumption is true if the AP client are in a low mobility environment. Wi-Fi was not designed to work in high-speed trains and it was mainly intended for indoor home or office use. Although in our test scenario, the AP and clients were static, the fan which is nearby is not necessarily static. The fan blades are rotating at a high speed and the fan blade of the fan used in the test was made of aluminium metal. Since metal reflects electromagnetic waves at different angles, depending on the angle of incidence. A rotating fan essentially creates a time-varying multipath fading channel with low coherence time, such that the channel estimated during the HELTF is no longer valid during the PSDU portion. This explains why the Wi-Fi file layer observes a lot of packet errors leading to the file data rates and throughput dropping. Now, why didn't the throughput become zero and cause disconnection? That's because Lower order modulations like 16QAM are able to handle high levels of channel estimation error and can still work. Note that the clients were in short range in our test, so there was adequate SNR. How serious is this issue for real world Wi-Fi usage? Would this impact real world use cases? The answer is probably no, because in practice the data rates offered by 16QAM are good enough for most use cases unless you are looking for AR, VR or 4K streaming with multiple client devices. Another important point to note is that this issue is applicable only for fans with metal blades. There are several ceiling fans, pedestal fans and table fans which come with either fiber or plastic blades. Also, the impact depends on the overall area of the fan. For example, a ceiling fan with metal blades will have an impact over an entire room because of the large area covered by the fan. In summary, the performance impact depends on the material of the fan blades, the area spanned by the fan blades, the speed of the fan, and the proximity of the Wi-Fi device to the fan. When we are doing Wi-Fi performance tests, 
we can't be going around checking the material of fans in the venue, measuring the dimensions of the fan or its speed. Instead, it's a far simpler solution to temporarily turn off the fan during the performance measurement and turn it back on once the test is done.